Because ultimately what I learned from my own life was that the secret to succeeding better was actually learning how to handle failure. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is day five of the seven days in a row video situation that I'm doing to celebrate the release of Tom's Daily Goals. So if you haven't got yourself a copy yet, make sure you do. But goal number five is stress and resilience and way to combat it because in everyday life, we face challenges, we make mistakes and we have to learn from them the best that we can. So I am joined today by best-selling author and creator of How To Fail podcast, Elizabeth Day. Hello. How exciting is this? It's so exciting. I'm very excited to have you in my oh, flat. <laughs> no, thank you for having us. It's so Pleasure. great. And I mean, it's a little bit muggy in here today. So, you know, our cameraman said that we look a little bit shiny, but we're fine with it. You know, we're going to keep rolling with it. It right? means we have no wrinkles. Exactly. Because we sweat loads. Exactly. <laughs> it's going to be, it's good for our skin. Exactly. It? It's good for our skin. But yeah, I was going to talk to you about your, mainly your podcast, How To Fail kind of seems like an odd way to think about succeeding. Yeah. Talking about failing first. Yeah, totally. Well, I, I came up with the title beca precisely because of that, because mm. I thought it would attract people who would then think, oh, that's a bit counterintuitive. Because ultimately what I learned from my own life was that the secret to succeeding better was actually learning how to handle failure, how to handle those moments when things didn't go right or didn't go according to plan or when you made a mistake or did something that you regretted. And it's actually how you come out of that mm. and the lessons that you take from it that teach you, I think, how to succeed. So, so that was the idea behind it. And I think also, do you find that people are often naturally resilient as well as things that can be learned because I know there's lots of people in my family that if something bad happens to them they automatically see the positive in it and they can figure out how to come back from that whereas how about if could you could you learn those techniques to come back and be like you know what I'm absolutely awful and this is the worst thing in the world but you know what I want to learn how to be more resilient definitely I definitely think you can learn it and I say that as someone who is a natural warrior okay good you know <laughs> and I'm naturally anxious and and I think I naturally my life philosophy up to this point has always been prepare for the worst yeah imagine exactly, the worst exactly. thing's gonna happen yeah and um and I think I've learnt a lot about emotional resilience just through kind of personal crises that yeah, yeah, I've yeah. been through. And and various people that I've spoken to on the podcast have said that you can acquire the skills. Mm. So one of my favourite interviewees so far has been Gina Miller, who's a political activist. And she has had a lot of stuff happen in her life. She survived an abusive marriage. Um, she dropped out of law school. She has been the target of racist and sexist abuse. And she has always said every time something happens or something goes wrong in my life, what I do is I sit down and I'm really honest with myself mm. and I make a list of the things that I could have done better or things that I could, perhaps unwittingly, my characteristics contributed to this happening. Yeah. And you have to be totally honest with yourself. And once you've done that, and once you've had that reckoning, mm. you can then grow because you've acknowledged what's gone wrong and you can grow from that knowledge. And I think sometimes it is really difficult to actually be that honest with yourself because so difficult. you once, you know, lots of people, you know, I myself have been included in this, you know, in the beginning of my diving career. If things go wrong, you start to blame all the things and the people around you are like, oh, well, how come this happened? How, why, why did this happen? Instead of realizing what's done is done. Mm. You can't change it. You can't do anything about it. And you have to figure out a way of learning from your mistakes or learning from the good things that you've done as well. And making like a combination of the good and the bad to make the best in the bigger picture, if you like. Definitely. And I think a lot of that is about knowing what you can control and what you can't control. Exactly. So, um, I mean, I've never been a top level Olympic diver. <laughs> I know that's probably a surprise you know. to your viewers. <laughs> well, neither is my mum. My mum doesn't like to put her head under the water. I so. love that fact. It's yeah. the best fact ever. I mean, I literally can't dive. But, um, we um, can teach you. It'd be yeah, fun. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. um, but I have gone through some stuff in my personal life. So for instance, one of the things that I've gone through is I got divorced and I had a miscarriage. And coming out of those very chaotic periods of my life, I realized that 
I could experience feelings of panic and extreme anxiety when things weren't going the way that I had planned. Yeah. When I'd sort of drawn up my life plan aged four or whatever, and you imagine your life turning out a certain way, these things had not gone according to that plan. And one of the the biggest and most useful lessons I learned was that sometimes you just have to feel the anxiety, Mm. but not be defined by it. Because it will pass, like Mm. that feeling will pass. And it's not actually, um, it's not actually anything that is demeaning you as a person. It's something that is a feeling that will pass, that is a natural thing. And once you've let it pass, you can kind of Mm. have much more of a constructive approach to building your own future again. Exactly. I think sometimes you just have to literally let it hit you and feel that wave of anxiety and stress and you can get beyond it with, you know, even just little things like breathing techniques and thinking about how you can make the best of any situation and learning to control the controllables and not try and control all the things that you just don't really have a control of. Mm. For example, I always find and always see people freaking out when there's delays on the trains and there's like oh my goodness I'm gonna be really late I'm gonna be late for work this is going wrong now this is going wrong and you can see them inside their heads you know going in circles and spinning thinking oh this is gonna be the worst day of my life now because my train turned up two minutes late when you think you know just breathe yeah don't catastrophize exactly a train is late and you can try and be in the present by breathing and ultimately I listened to this podcast actually when I was going through some dark stuff and it was Eckhart Tolle who wrote The Power of Now love him isn't he amazing he (laughs) is absolutely amazing I've read the book and you know I really um, you know the pain body that he talks about the thing inside your head where it's telling you you can't do something or the thing that makes you panic about something and you know, gets you to react with your ego rather than being in the present moment, I think is a really powerful message. So powerful. And he said two things that really Mm. stuck with me, one of which was the power of now. I mean, literally the fact that Mm. all we have is the present moment. Yeah. The past is done, the future's unwritten, and the, the best way of riding that surge of panic is to breathe and just know that it's a moment and it will pass. And the second thing he said was to treat everything that's happened to you as an active decision that Mm. you've made. Even if it isn't, obviously, and something terrible has happened to you and you're dealing with the fallout of that, if you try and switch your psychology so that you think, well, this has been sent to me for a reason and I'm going to learn from this Mm. and I'll be a better person because of it. And and you end up succeeding better as a result, both as a person and in your goals. Yeah, and I think also nowadays, especially with social media and technology and the internet, all that kind of stuff, people are often comparing themselves to other people. I'm guilty of it. I sometimes go on social media and think, oh my goodness, they're doing such great things, they're doing such great, I need to be doing that, why can't I do this? And I think that brings its own kind of stress in its own way and being able to manage things on social. I don't know what your thoughts on social media are in terms of stress and, you know, because it can be a minefield of stress. Yeah, I think it can be really toxic. And basically my position on social media is that it can be toxic if you're feeling low in yourself, but sometimes it can be amazing. If you're feeling kind of good and you're a good phase in your life, then Instagram, if you follow people that inspire you or you follow people you want to actively stay in touch with, can be a wonderful thing. And I think you mentioned it in your book. Yeah, exactly. About that thing about how if you you have to have an intention for your social media use about following someone who you admire or who inspires you or like looking at a lovely piece of art or whatever. Yeah, everything you do has to have some kind of intention and realising and be mindful of who you're following, why you're following them and what your intention is in following them. Is it to make you feel bad about your body? You don't want to do that. You want someone to help lift you up and feel motivated. But of course, you know, Tom Daly's YouTube channel is not toxic. Oh my goodness. A no, non-toxic it's environment. It's exactly, empowering. exactly. Yeah. Talk about all the good stuff. <laughs> but thank you very much for talking to me today. Thank you for talking to me. It's you know, been it's lovely. been very exciting and hopefully we'll, I'll come on your podcast soon. Yes, please. Yes, see, I said it on tape now, so it's going to happen. I know, I'm going <laughs> to use this in the court of law. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But thank you very much for watching. You can still get Tom's Daily Goals. There'll be a description link box below and you can go and do all that kind of stuff. I need to go home and take a nap because my son decided he didn't want to sleep last night. So thank you for watching. We'll be back with another goal tomorrow. So see you then. Make sure you subscribe.